Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. Just a couple of windbags in the Windy City. What's up, kids? Yes. We are in front of a live studio audience in Chicago, <laughs> hosted by our good friends at Shaker Recruitment Marketing. You are listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. This is your co-host, Joel the Fridge Cheeseman. This is Chad, Italian Beef So Wash. And on this week's show, AI, DEI, LinkedIn Better Watch It's Back, and a fireside chat with Shaker President Aww. Joe Shaker. Let's do this. Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. Chicago, Chad. My Chicago. Kind of town. Yeah, no, no question. Love I, Chicago. Once you get through all the traffic, it doesn't suck, right? It, it's awesome when you get through all the traffic. Yeah, somebody <laughs> said, oh, that one that one freeway's off. I'm like, there's like 10. Yeah. Which one are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. like, they all suck. <laughs> they yeah, do. not built for the, uh, the traffic no. yes. here. But, Need uh, the train. The train. Smaller, more manageable than New York. Bigger yes. than Boston. Uh-huh. Six pro sports teams. And Shakers here. Lake. Decent weather. The Skill Scouts here on video. Considering the news, everywhere's on fire. Everywhere is like <laughs> flooded. Chicago is a, a, a broad-shouldered, environmentally sound city that mm-hmm. people can visit or live. Another another great place uh, right now is Spain. I don't know if you saw the uh, the the woman the, the women's cup. I did World I Cup. Did. Yep. I yep. saw the highlights. That's the, I, I'm the not going to try time, to tell you. I woke up at second, six a.m. Second time it. in a row, you chose London yeah. and uh, you failed. So, all of our listeners in the UK, don't blame the lionesses that th- their injuries, anything like that. Blame blame me, Joel Cheeseman kids. How much does it suck to be an English fan? Like they always get right there and then and, they've got, and then fumble it. Yes, yes. They are the Cleveland Browns of the <laughs> of the soccer world, I think. Or or it could be the Chicago Bears. Hopefully they play play a hell of a lot better this year. Yeah. So shout out to uh, some friends here in Chicago. We had yes. dinner. Uh, that goes to Matt Grover of Recruitix and Ben Russell at Sonic Jobs. Took us out to a fine Italian restaurant. I had the chicken Good parm. Time. I think you had some sort of fish thing. Sea bass, baby. Sea, sea bass. bass. Yeah, got to keep that that figure in oh, yeah. check. Uh-huh. Uh, which then resulted into shocker uh, whiskey afterwards, <laughs> and then a slight I, hangover. I blame this Ben on that one. Sure. Yeah, I blame yeah. Ben on that one. I kept finding new, topped off glasses of, of whiskey. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good selection. Yeah. Good, good selection. The Widow Jane is a winner. If you haven't tried that, <laughs> have you ever tried it, that, kid? It is. It is. It is delicious. So, thank you to Chicago. Great yes. people. Great town. Beautiful. Let's Beautiful. get to some shout outs. So, I'm, I'm going to use my shout out time to play a new game I like to call Back to the Future. Are you ready? You're, you're, Back to the Future. Yes. There's, Back to the there's Future. There's no DeLorean. No. For this one, no, is there? no. No. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, Joel, is I'm going to read two press release bylines to you. From our friends over at Career Builder. Okay. Okay. And these you're going to tell headlines. me these are real headlines. Okay. One happened in 2018, and the other one happened in 2023. Ooh. Just this week. Just this week, right? Okay. I want you to tell me which one happened this week. Let's number play. one. Let's number play. one. Career Builder launches pay per resume. That's number one. Mm, okay. Pay per Indeed resume. did that about ten years ago. So that, that's okay. Okay. That's okay. yeah. It's suspect. That's right. A good, it's suspect. That's a good. The second one, Career Builder creates a major industry disruption with, get ready, 
AI technology that delivers next generation job search and hiring. Ooh. Okay, so we've got we've got paper resume. Yep. yep. We've got patent pending, by the way, AI. Okay. From Career Builder. Okay. Which one of those press releases came out this week? Can I call a friend or do no, I have, okay, No, there's no I there's no dialing, right, no, well, no calling a friend. Well, again, the the paper resume, pretty old. That's ten plus years indeed <laughs> did that. 2018, Career Builder was dropping Pokemon Go for jobs. Yeah. They were kind of like getting getting sort of in, innovative, I guess, for them. They're getting but jiggy I, with I it. Can't, They're it's getting got, jiggy with it. It's got to be the paper resume. There's no way that that is 2023. <laughs> it is. So, so w- which one are you picking? <laughs> I'm I'm going with the paper resume. That can't be a current current. That uh, is a pa- that is what dropped oh, this geez. week. Career Builder dropped pay per resume. As a new model, a new business model. Yes, that's right. Back to the future, kids. We're talking about something that Indeed did what? Well, we, well ten years ago. We, we've had a good joke with the new CEO. Oh, what's his name? Abe Froman, the Chicago <laughs> Abe Froman, the, yeah, the yeah, sausage yeah, the, king of Chicago. The, the, I, something like Furman. Like, Furman, yeah, I think it is. If this is his like his, the, the real his estate first, guy, the real his estate first guy. big headline, he's he's in trouble. Yeah, he's and they're they're definitely he's in literally in the office by himself. Oh, I, I I'm 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 sure of this. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Well, my shout out goes to Kid Rock, Mister Ba with the Ba, Chad. Well, you might remember Kid Rock Why? when we last saw him. Why shooting? Literally shooting cans of Bud Light, flipping off Budweiser, yes, and uh, dropping f bombs everywhere. Yes, well, because that was Mr. cool. Mister Rock, which is what his accountants <laughs> call him, Mister Rock. Rock, was seen drinking. You guessed it, a Bud Light this week. Reunited, and it feels so good, Chad. Uh, you know, thought leaders have two things going for them. Yeah. Not thought leaders. Influencers. Yes. Attention. Yes. And trust. After he blew up cases of Bud Light and told him to <laughs> F off, does he have any trust with his users now that he's back to drinking Bud Light? All I can say is, in his defense, you can take the kid out of the trailer park. You can't take the trailer park out of the kid. Yep. I ain't That's straight all out of Compton. Yes. I'm straight out the trailer. <laughs> Another shout out. You know, I love yes. the Canadians. You do. Yes. Man, this I is love, where I'm going love, to insert the, the, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> great, great white north. <laughs> uh, we talked about LinkedIn partnering with Clear yes. to, uh, to authenticate profiles. Yes. Well, that was a, a, an American only solution. Now oh, they've rolled it out to our friends up. up north. Now our Canadian friends can basically be real people with Clear. <laughs> And LinkedIn. So if you go to LinkedIn all, in Canada, you should start seeing, do you want to authenticate yes. your profile? So all the five LinkedIn users from Canada are going to have access. That's awesome. I love That's it. That's cold, man. <laughs> That's cold. They're at least up to six or seven at this point. We've got, uh, we, we've got free stuff. Let's talk, about, let's talk about that. It's hard to compete with LinkedInA.com, which is the competitor there in Canada. That's bad. Sorry. So Sorry. bad. Dad jokes come, to, come so with bad. me to Chicago, so bad. too. Yes free stuff chad we got free stuff we yes. brought some t-shirts to this event uh some we, people we might even get a, a shaker t-shirts. t-shirt cannon yeah we got shaker swag to take home with us but for people that didn't get a shirt here at shaker hq you can go to chadcheese.com click the free link give yes. us your contact information we got free shirts from our friends at job get we're giving away free beer from our friends at aspen Tech so Labs. good and oh, maybe beer. most importantly free whiskey from our friends in the I, Netherlands, Tex Colonel. I still have a headache this morning thinking, just thinking about free whiskey. Carry on. I do remember our debate last night as to how early we were going to get up. It yes. went from like seven yeah. and breakfast <laughs> to nine and like I'll just see it. I'll see you there kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and that was good. Ended up being 10, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. In addition to free stuff, Chad, we got some birthdays Let's to celebrate as we normally do. Birthdays. Uh, some big hitters. Big hitter birthdays Who? this week. We got Tracy Cole. Oh. Bradley Clark. You might uh-huh, remember we yes. celebrated his Re- co-founder Rec- 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 text uh, yes. last week. So oh, Bradley. Fucking Canadians everywhere. The Jesus. Sun. That's right. That's Andrea crazy. Wade. Yes. Out in Ireland. Love her. Beverly Collins. Oh. I wonder if she got a new Maserati for her birthday. She might Who have. Knows? She Who might knows? have. It could have happened. I, I hope she did. Nick Livingston. Our friend oh. own it. Home. Amon Brar on the beaches of <laughs> wow. Fiji or Bora Bora. Those at are this, some at this big moment, names. He's... Joey Stubbs Stubblebine celebrates a birthday. Dina nice. Funky Cold Medeiros and my wife, Dr. Christine Picard Cheeseman, <laughs> celebrates a birthday this week. So happy birthday 
to all our listeners the, that are celebrating another year. The bug lady. Does she go by that? The bug lady. Yeah, our, yeah. You saw our, you saw, <laughs> you saw our license plate, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, insects, insect. right? Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's awesome. That's fun. All right, so we're going to go ahead and roll into events, kids. We've got RecFest coming up uh, September 13th and 14th in Nashville. What's happening at RecFest? It's going to be a party. It's going to be fun. It's going to be learning, bonding, drinking, all that stuff. It's kind of what we do. Uh, so it's perfect for us and our listeners, not to mention uh, for TA pros and their entire teams. They should be bringing their entire team to this thing. E- yeah. Even if, let's say, for instance, a TA leader wants to come to do a little recon. Yep. Sounds great. Sounds great. But those who need that all-in-one kind of package for a, a team a team meeting, this is perfect. Go to RecFest. Almost here, about three weeks away. And I'm pretty sure our Groupon still works, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Use Chad and Cheese as uh, your coupon yeah. code. And we're talking half off. Yes. It is legit Groupon status. Yes. Discounts at Chad and Cheese. Everybody. Then then September 20th, we have a gem virtual event. These are slowly going away. Remember we were doing virtual events like every other day? Remember wasn't that? A, wasn't a fan in, in mass. Yeah I, can, yeah. I can do it occasionally. I like it occasionally. Well, we're going to have uh, Mona Sloan, PhD from NYU, and uh, Keith Sonderling. You know him as Commissioner the commish. Sonderling from right. the EEOC, uh, where we're going to be talking about AI's ability to unlock recruiting efficacy, uh, the trials, tribulations, and reasons why or why not the recruitment community should embrace ai then hr tech's happening this is going to be ridiculous yep. fuel 50 we're going to be in the fuel 50 booth for two days straight so find us bring us beer please food beer all that other fun stuff uh but come to the fuel 50 booth and then the very next week this is ridiculous we're gonna hop on a, a plane uh-huh and go to one of our most favorite shows in paris yep unleash world uh so we're really excited about that in october uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Is 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 there going to be an AA booth at any, any of these shows? Because <laughs> I'm I'm a little scared about all this, but not nearly as scared, Chad, as fantasy football. That's oh. right. People watching us on YouTube know that you were donning a Chicago Bears jersey. Dub Bears, Justin Fields. If you love fantasy football, put in your name for our league. We'll be choosing players very soon. Okay. Uh, we'll be drafting very soon yes and uh it's our third i think installment of fantasy football i think third or fourth third or fourth yeah, yeah. so uh it's becoming a tradition it is here at chad and it cheese is. and and we're excited so if you love fantasy football hit us up and uh put your name in the hat to get into the league i'm getting i'm getting texts every day from people who are like trying to trying to find their way into the fantasy football league yeah yeah. It's really funny because I feel like we had to pull teeth to get the first, At first round of oh, people. Yeah. Now everybody wants to do and, it, and now that they know yes. that you know we every the, the leaderboard every week, like it's so much fun. <laughs> people want to get on it, and, and and big shout out to Factory Fix for for this jersey, fine Chicago uh, yes. company, yeah. for sponsoring uh, fantasy football. We'll see you in September. And Mike and the the kids over at Factory Fix for getting me this this beautiful Justin Fields jersey it is nice it's, they spent some nice. coin on that it's nice that's that's not the cheap not uh, street jersey no, that you get on the way not. to it's not on the way to gotta gotta yeah. watch it on youtube though kid <laughs> can i get a topics topics all right ai first time all right oh my god new york times this is constant dude the new york times and open ai could end up in court chad the times is considering suing open ai over intellectual property rights as negotiations for a licensing deal falter. Concerns arise that AI like ChatGPT could replace original reporting. Legal implications of AI's use without permission remain uncertain. Chad, how is this case going to shake out? It's fairly, I mean, this is going to be commonplace. And uh, I mean, uh, OpenAI actually has, they put out a report, eh, really, really instructions on how to get your uh, site ready to not be scraped, indexed, or, or what have you. So I think, you know, we've learned from the days of Google, uh, robot TXT files, yep. right? Uh, so what those robots can actually come after data-wise and get and, and what they can't. So this, is, this isn't this is anything new. It's, it's I, you, you mentioned the banana in the tailpipe. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which which is which is brilliant. I'm not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe again. New York Times, they're not falling for the banana in the tailpipe. Yeah. So historically, uh, Google 
took content from newspapers, created a, a advertising model, i.e., yes. a, a money printing machine in the back of the office. And the New York Times and other newspapers fell in revenue and eyeballs, yeah. et cetera. And more and more of that is happening as Google is just taking snippets of news, answering questions. Nobody even goes to news sites anymore in most cases. Yeah. So the New York Times learned their lesson that uh, we let Google take all the money, Facebook take all the money, and we're not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe again <laughs> and let OpenAI and Bard and everything else uh, Beverly take, Hills Cop, take by money the way, guys. off our plate Beverly because Hills we Cop. own the content and, and we should be yeah. uh, paid fairly for that. Now, historically, there's some interesting precedent cases. So number one, you have Google scanned books at one point and you could get you know Moby Dick and other historical books and things off the internet. There was a case against that. The court said that that was okay because it wasn't a, an original take on what was already done. These are books that are already in the public space. Uh, but then there was another case with um, uh, artist uh, Andy Warhol yes. where he would take historical pictures and he would do the Andy Warhol thing with yeah. those. Now, he yeah. lost that case to be able to do that. So where in the justice system are they going to put what OpenAI is doing with content are they going to win or lose? I think it's a very important case uh, of how the future yeah. of AI is going to pan out, yeah. and we will continue to watch it very closely. Yes, it is. It's it's not just text, and that's what we cared about mostly with Google. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did also with images, but yeah, we're talking. This is multimodal, modal, so it will be something that will continue to happen. But again, anybody who cares about guarding. Mm -hmm their contents you know there's way to there there are ways to do it yeah if the new york times was smart it would uh build an alliance with all the other major newspapers and do an auction between open ai and microsoft and google <laughs> and facebook about who's going to get our content to model their ai after and make a ton of money from one of those one of those companies yeah. well new york Times, but also the New York State Empire of State of Mind baby. is in the news. A new bill in the New York State Senate proposes regulations for AI tools and employee monitoring and decision making. Tools used must be deemed necessary, requiring clear notice, and must undergo a bias audit. Employers must notify employees about their use. Violations may result in fines. Get this, Chad. Hold on to your seats of up to fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> for subsequent off offenses chad what is your take on the new york state of mind well th this is f two aspects that they talk about monitoring tools and automated decision making tools right so the bill prohibits these employers and employment agencies i think this the employment staffing agencies mm -hmm are really the ones that could take the big hits here. And I'll tell you why here in a second. Um, on the, not just the monitoring, but the auto, uh, automated decision-making. Um, because if you take a look at every instance, right? And they're talking about instances because the, 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 the fines seem pretty pathetic, but when you scale, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and you're scaling decisions with AI and you make 30,000 decisions in a second, 30,000 times 1,500, 30,000 times 500, right? So it does seem pretty pathetic, but if there are all these instances against who knows how many individuals in a specific time frame, yep. then this could be a big fucking problem for companies. Now, they talk about um, auditing, right? Yep. And that you must audit within a year's time frame. Um, I think any... This is, this is great for consulting companies, by the way. Um, but I think any company who, especially a major Fortune 500 company, who waits a year mm -hmm. to do an audit is actually, I mean, they're tripping themselves up. They should be auditing every quarter, Fortune 500 companies, staffing companies who have a m multitude of clients mm -hmm. and brands that they have to serve. They should be, they should actually have a whole unit Yep. of people who are doing this at least on a monthly basis. Because again, if you're making that many decisions through automation, and they are, for all those different brands, yeah. this could rack up a huge, huge bill. And what New York City did uh, early on, their, their legislation, their, their regulations or proposed reg regulations had a lot of holes in yep. it, right? And we talked on the show back then that this is just the first step. Don't get ready 
for you know perfection right out of the gate. I mean, we're talking about the government. If you're looking for perfection on the first step, I mean, come on. Yeah. Really, uh, this is this is tying up a bunch of loose ends, closing some gaps. It's not perfect, but it is definitely a, a step in the in the right direction. And employers and staffing companies have a lot of work to do because yep. they could they could get their it could be caught in a ringer pretty quick. Yeah, I got a laugh out of this because it reminded me of the the pay transparency laws uh, in New York that that happened, and people yeah. were posting jobs of zero to two million in salary, which is I guess that's pay transparency technically. But uh, those companies got pinched pretty hard. Uh, yes, for those, for those and they job should be. Postings. I mean, look, you mentioned uh, businesses are going to be created for consulting. There's going to be audit companies that have official badges or official They're certification already out there dude okay, that's well, a thing that's the thing they're gonna make a lot of money yeah. doing this assuming yeah. it, it, it it spreads in other states and cities lawyers are gonna make a lot of money uh you know <laughs> welcome to america companies yes, yes. corporate welcome lawyers are gonna make a lot of money but ultimately what you said in terms of the winner here is is the citizen the worker you know, it's it's amazing to me how many people uh, at work don't know that their company can read their email or that yeah. companies oh, are looking at called sheet. You know, so yeah. the fact that that wasn't, hey, we're going to you need to alert people that you're doing that. Yeah. Let's at least make this right, that if you're using highly scalable mass data points to figure out who's doing what, yeah. uh, who's at risk of whatever, who's a threat to whatever, uh, that people know about that and that they can act hopefully better than they would if they yeah. thought they weren't being watched. Well, on the on the monitoring side of the house, during remote work, I mean, we've stepped into an entirely different narrative yeah. around how people are working from home. That's their space, right? Yeah. There's no reason. I don't care if they're doing work and it's your work or not. That's still their space. It's their home. So there's got to be some respect that happens there. Yeah. No, you know, uh, we've we've talked about uh, some companies using uh, the cameras automatically, keeping the cameras on yeah. uh, so that uh, they can monitor, visually monitor uh, their employees while they are working yeah. or not working. Uh, keystroke uh, types of uh, programs that are actually installed mm -hmm. on these these uh, these uh, computers and whatnot. I mean, they're they're all irrelevant to be quite frank because at the end of the day. If the job is getting done, if the KPIs are getting met, if the goals are getting hit, I don't care when you're in front of your computer. As long as you're not missing meetings, you're, you're doing your job, you're meeting all those things, I don't care. This is a, a, a culture of control yeah. that we're seeing. Unless you're rocking a Jeffrey Tubin, uh, it shouldn't matter what you're doing uh, at home. Just another reason not to do it. <laughs> and look, this is going to make companies think twice about should we do this? If, if yeah. we have to let our people know that we are tracking this, oh. ultimately a lot of companies aren't going to buy these products and services. And oh, yeah. Companies that create them need to think about, okay, yeah. if the future of our, of our product is transparency, like what kind of future do we have? We're not hidden in the shadows. We're not this sort of like checking your keystrokes and, and what's going on. So full transparency here I think is good for everybody. Um, to your point of the, the fines, hopefully those have teeth. Uh, typically, unless someone's in an orange jumpsuit, nothing changes. <laughs> but if there's some real penalties for some of these companies, yeah. then then things hopefully hopefully will change. Well, more AI. We're going to get artsy fartsy on everybody, Chad, which we normally don't do on the show. But a, a U.S. Andy Warhol, a U.S. district court has ruled that AI generated art cannot be copyrighted. The judge stated that copyright requires human authorship, citing past cases like the monkey selfie. Remember the monkey selfie? Yes. Yeah, Google it if you don't know. While acknowledging AI's role in new artistic frontiers, the ruling raises questions about how much human input is needed for AI-created art to be copyrighted. Any thoughts on this ruling, Chad? It can't be enforced, period. I mean, it, it was funny because we've been talking for years about the whole whack-a-mole scenario mm -hmm. on how there are going to be programs that can identify these things. In this new world that we live in, that will not work. And here's why. If you build a program for, let's just say, um, ChatGPT, OpenAI, right? That is one large language model. As we start to have these new islands of uh, large language models that are built. They're going to be millions easily, yep. right? And there are plenty that are out there already. It's just that open AI's, you know, new, new glory. Everybody now knows about them, but they're going to be millions of these local, uh, LLMs that are out there yep. and they're all trained on entirely different data. If you're trying to tune one for a certain 
large language model, mm -hmm. it's not tuned for all of them. So you're going to have to, it, it's going to be impossible to keep up with the ones that are public yeah. that you have access to, let alone the ones that are private in their own private domains. It's going to be impossible. So the whole whack-a-mole scenario is, it's not going to exist because you can't keep up with it. It's scaling too fast. Yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to, uh, to spin this as a, an employment, uh, take on this and i think i think i got it so we're in, we're in <laughs> chicago we're in chicago here uh and who's arguably the the greatest athlete in his sport that played in chicago in the 80s and 90s yes a guy named michael jordan jordan well, there's a movie called MJ. air which i recommend if you okay. haven't seen it starring matt damon and ben affleck imagine that about the nike air story how yes. they landed michael and there's a, a, a there's a conversation in the movie where uh, ben Affleck, who's the founder of uh, Nike, says how they got the logo. They paid thirty-five dollars to some local uh, oh, creative, shit. yeah, to make it, yeah. and she got thirty-five dollars. But I'm thinking, like, if that was today, they wouldn't need an artist to create a logo. They could AI make me a ton of different logo options, yeah. pick yeah. from those, Easily. and we're done. So there's gonna yeah. be it, so there's gonna be a lot of creative people that are either going to have to harness AI in a new way to be you know, more hireable or more valuable. Yeah. Because a lot of companies are going to bypass creatives, whether it be video, whether right. it be audio, whether right. it be design, um, and take creatives totally out of the picture. So to me, it's like if I'm a creative person, I'm thinking really hard about how do I create original stuff with AI and how yeah. do I do stuff with AI that no other creative can do. Well, you should be using this to scale no matter what job yeah. you have, right? I mean, it, look for ways to actually scale this, whether you're in marketing, whether you're in sales, whether you're, I mean, it doesn't matter. You're looking for different ways to progress and, and scale what you can do and do more of. Yeah. It's, the, it's the adage that's becoming popular of you won't lose your job to AI, you'll lose your <laughs> job to someone that understands AI. Exactly. And with that, let's take a quick break and we'll talk about Grinder. Excuse I me? I hardly even know her. Excuse me? All right, Chad, LinkedIn has had wannabe competitors over the years, for yes. sure, and we've talked about some of them. Polywork, Jobcase, <laughs> LinkedIn, for those who aren't on LinkedIn and many uh -huh. others. But, but let's talk about some new participants. First up is X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Okay. We recently talked about job postings being available to verified corporate accounts, but new rumors include a job search function and Lasky's former CEO, who was acquired by Twitter, has hinted at a matchmaking feature on the social network. Then you have competition in the form of some unexpected places. But Chad, I want to get your take on X's new rumors about enhancing their job search functionality. So I thought it was interesting because I had never heard of Lasky. I don't think you had either, had no, you? No, yeah, that were, was a shocker. They were acquired, yep. they were acquired. I was like, who the hell is Lasky? Um, uh, which was the job matching site that uh, Twitter acquired in May. Um, the CEO, Chris, I think Bake or Bake or... Bake, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he was also founder of Interviewed, the interviewing company that Indeed bought. He was at Indeed for a couple of years, left and started Lasky. He did that with his co-founder who took the same trail, mm -hmm. the CTO. His name is, uh, what is it, what is it, what is it? Daniel O'Shea. So they've got some experience in the space and they have sold now two companies to some pretty big brands, yep. right? Here's the big problem. We've talked about this before. LinkedIn has more data on me than any other platform out there. Intent, intent context, all of it. Mm -hmm. they, they, they suck at matching, right? Uh, Indeed has a lot of information, right? They suck at matching. Uh, Twitter doesn't have any information about me and what I do. So there's really no context to be able to help me find a job yeah. other than jobs near me, which could be admin assistants and things that I really don't care about. So I think it's 
interesting. Can they get information on me? Can they scrape, you know, do do a high cue and try to scrape LinkedIn yeah. <laughs> uh, or something like that? I don't know how they get the data because I'm not going to give it to them. I don't trust them. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I, I don't trust them with anything. Yeah. So there, so there are two sides to this. And one is our company is going to sign up to post their jobs on Twitter. And I, I tend to think a lot of companies will spend the 12 grand, which is the current price tag, yeah. if they can get their jobs on Twitter, especially if there's a search box. Isn't it only there's five, though? It, they, there's, there's an XML feed, and then you can like promote It's five. a little unclear, Chad. Yeah. Much, much like weird. all the things that are going on at yeah. X, it's a little unclear. But if they do create a, a search box, or, or their search box includes, hey, search for jobs, and there's like an all-encompassing search, companies will jump on board to get their jobs on Twitter. They just will. That'll be something that's not a huge They'll do it badly, expense. yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll, yeah, XML feed, upload, whatever, and, and will X be able to, to handle that correctly? So I do think there will be a good number of companies that say, oh, I can put my jobs on, on X. Like, yeah, it's, it's how much? Okay, cool. And we're verified, and we get all that other shit that a yeah. verified company yeah. gets. We get the gold check. So I do think that they'll find, they'll get some, some, some leverage with companies. The point that you bring up, too, is the job seeker. And Twitter's brand right now is you post little snippets of your thoughts and links. And uh, it used to be little snippets. Yes. So now <laughs> every indication is that Elon wants to be the super app that is popularized in China the, the and WeChat. places in, yeah, in Asia. WeChat. And if, if he succeeds in that, then if you think of it as everything, then finding a job or networking – becomes maybe part of that uh, value value add. So the real challenge to me is can Elon pull off this everything app where you can get your car, you can pay for everything, yeah. and now you can like network and upload a profile that's professional. And I mean, the matching, they do have the data. They do have people on the platform. So if they know by where you are locally, can they, they don't match have you enough with jobs? Of data. They don't have enough data, though. But Indeed has more it? data on oh, me. Oh, for sure. Right? And they're they long, still do a shit job of matching. They have a long way to go. They're horrible. To compete with LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, but can they get the, the young people to embrace X as opposed to LinkedIn is where my hmm. grandpa, you know, put his profile. <laughs> so I, I don't know. It's it's fun to watch. Elon's always good TV, good podcasting, good everything. So we'll continue to cover this. But I, He's a fucking The good news wreck, is yeah. I think he's serious. I think, you know, I mentioned he came up with um, uh, in, at PayPal with LinkedIn's founder, Reid Hoffman. So he's seen this. It is low-hanging fruit to get companies to post jobs and, and people to, to do that. So uh, I think he is serious, and I think it'll be fun to watch. He's got an uphill battle, especially yeah. with this, this everything app thing. But it will be, it will be, will be fun to Remember watch. Remember when we thought Facebook was, was serious about this? I think the same thing's going to happen. And Google is serious <laughs> about it. And yeah. they're a little more serious about job postings because yeah. I think that's easier for them. Yes. But yes, we've seen companies come and go and get the hell out of it because it's a pain in the ass yeah. for the most part. Uh, yeah. And Elon will probably lose interest. He'll get bored and shoot off some rockets or yeah. dig a hole yeah, in, that's in a LA or something. Moment. Yeah, yeah. A squirrel moment for, for him. Well, from X to maybe triple X to some people, uh, you may know Grinder as the go-to destination for LGBTQ plus people looking for a hookup, Chad. But apparently it's now being used as an alternative to the likes of LinkedIn. Users Ooh. checking into the dating app to see how many feet they are from a potential love interest can now expect to be poached for work rather than asked out. That's because around 25% of its users are on the app to network, according to the company. Chad, should LinkedIn be losing any sleep over Grindr? No, um, I think it's incredibly creepy. I mean, I am so uninformed about, I've never used Grindr. And then when I started reading this, that you could actually see the proximity mm -hmm. of how close you are to, I mean, it is like the, the perfect stalker app. I mean, it is creepy as fuck, dude. And then, okay, think of it, just think <laughs> of it from this standpoint. Oh my God, this brings, this brings an entirely different vantage point to company culture. Yep. Think of the company culture. I mean, it's it you, literally your company culture is a hookup culture. You're, I, that to me does not go together at all, right? So if you're looking, I mean, if you're looking to diversify, mm -hmm. we've talked to uh, Mitchie over at my my G Work. That 
is a company that was focused on creating a LinkedIn property yep. for the LGBTQ plus community, right? This is, this is, no, this is trying way too hard. Don't mix my hookups with my, with my hiring. Yep. That, that is a recipe for fucking disaster in the workplace. Yeah. So there is some, some historical precedents for this. Uh, Bumble is also a dating app from what I hear yes. on the news, Chad. Uh, <laughs> but they launched Bumble Biz yes. a few years ago to compete with LinkedIn. Uh, you don't hear a lot about Bumble Biz. I think it's safe to say you don't no. hear a lot of comp- companies and employers using it. So to me, Grinder, if they ever did get Grinder Biz, I don't know what they would call it. Um, I don't see that taking off just like I didn't see Bumble no. taking off. However, recruiters are going to recruit and they're, they're going to think outside the box. They're going to try to get creative. And for them to, to sit outside the corporate headquarters of said company that they want to poach from, Look on Grinder of who is who is there. Can you imagine asking your recruiters to go on Grinder to do that? You won't ask recruiters; they'll just do. You know, you know, recruiters, man. Oof. They they do whatever it takes to get in front of the companies. <laughs> I don't care. Employees. I don't want to know. I'm whatever just telling it takes, you, this okay? this will continue to be a fringe Jesus resource for yeah. recruiters to poach from people at companies while they're at work. Hey, can we meet up for lunch? I'd like to talk to you about whatever. Uh, not a hookup just, or whatever, and then they pitch them on the job opportunity. That is going to happen. To sit outside of Microsoft's headquarters, get on Grinder and see who who's there, and then connect with those people and hire them is gonna happen. And apparently, obviously, is. I got nothing, man. You got nothing. I got. I got. I literally got nothing. I, it, it twists my mind to think what type of company culture you're building in going after people that way i mean there 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 are great professional networks that you can get into sure. for all these different communities when 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 the when the network starts with a, a hookup it's an entirely different mindset mm-hmm. to be able to build your company on do you remember when twitter first came out and people started recruiting on twitter yeah people that's like, entirely well, different would- that's entirely different though I mean, we're talking about we're talking Is about it? a micro blogging platform versus Not a hookup, a hookup site. Okay. Yeah, that's th- totally Even different. Even though the company says twenty five percent of the users use it to network and make friends and contact i call that bullshit you call they're, it bullshit. They're, they're, okay. their version of network <laughs> is not the kind of professional networking that we're talking about there's also rumors uh or grinder may be a public company i'm not i'll have to check know. that but i know that they've talked about it mm-hmm. going out on as a as a spac if they were going public this would be the perfect sort of narrative Whew. to say we're not just a hookup site we're a LinkedIn competitor, and that is going to sell like, a lot of shares. Like, yeah, I'm like sure. Handshake yeah, and all the other. And, We're the new LinkedIn. Yeah, no, you're yeah, not. No, yeah. you're not. All right, well, let's uh, go from the new LinkedIn to the new EEOC, I guess. Uh, the Ameri- America First Legal Foundation, led by former Trump advisor Stephen Miller, has requested that the EEOC investigate corporations, including Activision, Blizzard, and Kellogg, claiming that their diversity, equity, and inclusion policies violate anti-discrimination law. The foundation alleges that these policies disadvantage white heterosexual men. The foundation's efforts are considered a move to discouraging employers from implementing DEI programs, causing a potential conflict within the EEOC stance on diversity initiative. Chad, your thoughts and how much have you donated to the American (laughs) First Legal Foundation? So you had to see this coming. I mean, uh, affirmative action was struck down by the Supreme Court. Uh, that was the first domino. This is this is going to be a wave. The actors here, the players, America First Legal Foundation. If you're listening to this podcast and you don't know the history of America First, look it up. Back in the 40s, you've got to understand where this is actually coming from. Uh, and Stephen Miller, I'm not even going to talk about that guy. Here's a quote from Bloomberg Law. America's first... America First has accused Morgan Stanley, PwC, McDonald's, and Starbucks, and many more, of having discriminatory DEI programs that aim to increase workplace representation of women and minorities. Wait for it. Wait for it. At the expense of white heterosexual males. At the expense. Yep. End quote. Okay, so here's... Newest Pew research. When we're talking about expense, okay? Dude, you're dropping Bloomberg Law and White. Pew research in the same thing. <laughs> you're going to blow my mind up. White women are paid 83 cents on the dollar as men. Yep. 
Black women, 70, 70 cents on the dollar. Hispanic women, 65 cents. And yet, they feel like this is happening at the expense mm-hmm. of the heterosexual white male. Another quote from Bloomberg Law, uh, quote, it also targets the company's employer employee network groups for women, uh, racially and ethnic uh, minorities, LGBTQ plus workers, and others saying that they are also discriminatory because no such group exists for white heterosexual males. So I asked Julie because she is literally the expert in you know all things of this nature I know right this. on on the diversity yep. side all that stuff so i asked her i said have you ever heard of a white man erg and without missing a beat she said yeah no they've been around forever they call them the c-suite and the board of directors yep. right this is total bullshit that that was a touche moment sure. for me Mic but drop moment. to be able yeah. to say that they're disadvantaged is ridiculous and, and and the question is why is this happening and why are we seeing this happen so fast yep. and i have one clue 2040 in 2040 or around 2045 the white demographic in the united states is going to become the minority there are a lot of white men in power who are afraid they're fearful for what that actually means mm-hmm. right And that's why this shit's happening. The EEOC basically is ensuring companies and their separate locations look like the communities that they that that they that they're in. That's all they're doing. Right. So to be able to attack these things and we're going to see it, you know, obviously go to the Supreme Court. This is this is going to be this is going to be an issue and it's going to get worse as we get closer to 2040. Yes. Uh, so you remember in the 80s, the, uh, the, the sci-fi series V? Yes. For those that don't, it's not worth your time to go uh, check it out on YouTube or wherever it might be. But yeah, basically, trailer. aliens come to, to Earth. They look like humans, so we can't like, place them as regular. <laughs> no no and, clue and where the, this is going. There's a, there's a big episode where a woman has a baby uh-huh. that's part alien and part human. That's Stephen Miller. What what comes out of her? Just if you want to check. So, he's he's one of the lowest forms of people ever. Th- this I yeah. You meant so you mentioned the Supreme Supreme Court. Uh, we knew this was going to happen. We knew yeah. what happened in schools. We knew what happened in in corporate life, and this is this is a reaction uh, reaction to that. At its simplest form, this is a grift by him and the organization. They're going to raise so much money. Yes, from donors. Uh, that want to fight this fight. The kid rocks of the world. He's going to make it. Yeah, they're going to make a ton of money. He's going to get a ton of uh, of airtime on every television show, it's podcast. Fucking ridiculous. Uh, in this, so he's an e- he's on an ego trip. He's yes. making tons of money from this. It's a grift. The sad part about this, and we we discussed this in prior episodes, is that we have politicized diversity. We have a, we have politicized. We have demonized diversity sure sure this this organization has demonized diversity and and the money raising happens on both sides fucking horrible and what's what's so sad is that companies that i think had every good intention of focusing on diversity focusing on a more inclusive uh company and Mm -hmm. workforce have now said we don't want any part of this conversation we don't want to be the next bud light we don't want to be the next target. And the so sad short, part is, is that we talk more and more and we're seeing more and more stories about companies dropping their diversity programs. And it's because of this bullshit. Yeah. What could have been a perfectly fantastic period of yeah. inclusion yeah. has been politicized, demonized. And this is what we see as a part of it. Yeah. And it's a fucking shame. Well, and this is, this is a call out to all the DEI leaders that are out there. All the ones that I've talked to over the years that say, I will not talk politics, this is what happened. Politics knocked on your door. You didn't answer, right? You didn't answer. Then they kicked your door down, went into your pantry, took your Cheetos, sat on your couch and started watching Fox News, right? They put their, their, their butt on your couch in your house. Mm-hmm. The question is, what are you going to do about it? You DEI leaders who weren't going to talk politics, guess what? 
too damn bad. You have no choice now. You got to get out there and fight. And if you don't, more of this shit's going to happen. And that's the hard part, especially in the employment side. And those are flaming hot Cheetos, by the way, Chad. So everyone should be doubly pissed off about that. Well, let's take a breath, and yes. we're going to bring Joe Shaker, president of Shaker light up Recruitment the world Marketing, here, kids. for a little fireside chat, Chicago style. And we're back. And Joe we're back. Joe Shaker, Guys, welcome. You? Dude. No, yeah, you know what? Actually, I should welcome you all. So welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Shaker Hub, as we like to call it. Oh, that's always a pleasure. And I got to tell you, it's been it's fun. It's gorgeous, dude. It's been fun sitting backstage uh -huh. watching the show, <laughs> seeing what, how animated you all yeah. are. But I have to tell you, I am so happy that I did not join you guys last night for dinner. Yeah, um, that was a smart choice. Because I feel choice. great today. That was I a good choice. And, and with the Cubs... Battling for the wild card spot, you are a little pep in your step. You're a little, I do. I a little do. better. Three back. Normal. I think you're five back. Is that right, Joe? Oh, five? I mean, no, I think you're five. I don't, I don't, I'm not looking. I'm not. Uh, Browns. We'll talk Browns at the end of, uh, of the interview. But the Cubs, gotta, you got to be excited about that. I am excited, yeah. but it's the Cubs. So let's see how they close yeah. out. I know, <laughs> I know how that goes. So some of our listeners don't know you, don't know Shaker. Give us a quick what? sort of Twitter bio on you and the company. Sure. Um, for those that don't, I'm Joe Shaker Jr., uh, president of Shaker Recruitment Marketing. Um, all I've ever done is recruitment and advertising. Um, I took over the business from my father um, about eight or nine years ago, um, but I've been doing it since birth. Um, our agency has been around for 74 years. It was started by my grandfather, um, and we've been based in Oak Park, Illinois, for about 30 to 40 years of the 70. It's a great little neighborhood. Great neighborhood. It's a great, and this is a great, this is a great location. Every time we come, it's like we got the whole escalator set up here, which no, I it's don't nice know any other. Parking, yes. downtown, you know, like, yes. forget about it. Yes, yeah. you're Good screwed. Luck. Good yeah. luck. Good luck. So, so grinder for recruitment. Are you guys yeah. working on that now? You know, I, <laughs> you, I always learn a thing or two on your shows, and I learned something here today. Right, there'll be a meeting later uh, to discuss, be, uh, discuss the opportunities. <laughs> there will be a grinder meeting, just so everybody yeah. knows. The shaker grinder meeting's happening. Okay, just so you're ready. Get your notes. I, I also you everybody know, download guys, the app today. So you since know what you guys also about. start with callouts. Yes. And you mentioned birthdays. Uh -huh. And you mentioned your wife. Yep. Um, my daughter turned seven on Friday. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. And she go. actually is pretty, thinks I'm pretty cool today, knowing that I'm going to be on YouTube later this week. Ooh. So, uh, happy seventh birthday to Marion. Yes. Very nice. That, oh, we're going to have to actually just go ahead and get a clip of that and send that to Marion so like she can it. play it for the, for the, for the kids. Yeah, I love it. I got to get some brownie points for that. <laughs> Joe, Joe knows some people that can edit some video. I Joe, think. Yeah. Joe knows some people. Joe knows some people. So, Joe, we're going to go ahead and hit, hit with fastball right out of the gate. Big news happening in the industry. Yeah. Okay, AppCast buys Bayard, one of your competitors, friends, but competitors, yep. right? You guys have known each other forever. Long time. Those guys have been in, in business for around 100 years. You guys were on 75. I mean, you guys are the heavyweights in this space. Um, how surprised were you, first off? That Bayard sold? Yes, that they That's, sold. I mean, as soon as. And to AppCast. So as soon as Shamrock bought Bayard the first time. Uh-huh. Right? PE comes in, they're not building another 100-year company. Right, right. So were we surprised that Bayard sold? Of course not. Yeah. Um, were we surprised that Epcast bought it? Yeah, that was surprising. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. So knowing that it was PE, knowing it's been around for 100 years, how surprised are you that they are ditching the Bayard name? That did surprise me. Yeah. I was, I was pretty set on my ass when I heard yeah. that. Were you more surprised that Twitter went away or Baird went away? Mm -hmm. Twitter. Okay. I mean, Chris knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, and he's building one company. He doesn't want the two separate brands. So, yeah. Um, we, we, we still sometimes talk about, right, Indeed versus Glassdoor. Yeah. Should it be one name or two? Mm -hmm. so, right. Right. Right out of the gates, um, I think Chris is being very clear on where he's going and what his direction is. Yeah. Yeah. They should have called it Radency. Is that taken? <laughs> Does anybody have that one? I don't, I don't know. So that being said, you, yeah. guys, you guys are obviously closely um, working and partnered with AppCast. Correct. This is this is a weird dynamic now. I mean, there 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 was always kind of like this coopetition that was happening yep. in the first place, but this goes to another level. What, where do you guys where do you guys go from here? Is there is there an opportunity to use other platforms along with Clickcast? I mean, what's 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 the thoughts for not just Shaker but other yeah. agencies like yours? And feel so, free to a lot of our listeners. Programmatic is new to them. Clickcast is alien. A quick historical perspective on how we got here. I For think all those well, Europeans. Well, and I think it's, I mean, you make a very good clear point there too, Joel. So, I mean, you have to separate the two for the conversation. Yeah. Clickcast and AppCast, right? 
Um, you are correct. We use both, right? And we use Shaker, uses ClickCast as the technology to distribute our jobs. Mm -hmm. But I have a team of 20 plus really smart individuals that are then dictating where should we send those jobs based on data. And ClickFast, right, is that distribution arm. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris and his team were at the forefront of that. Yes. Right? Bringing that technology, Smartly. that distribution tool, right, ah. um, to the table, into recruiting, and giving it to the vehicle or, or groups like Shaker yeah. that can then dictate, right, how we want to send those jobs. But to be clear, right, we control where those jobs go and use ClickCast as the distribution arm. Shortly thereafter, they came out with a product called AppCast, which is drives applications to our clients. We judge AppCast no different than we would judge Indeed, Glassdoor, X, Facebook, Google, who's going to drive the, the most applications. No based. bias. No bias. Best results are the winner. Where it's yep. going to go. And so AppCast is in those conversations and will continue to be in those conversations regardless of the fact that it's owned by Bayard. As long as the client is getting the results from those appropriate media sources, we will continue to use AppCast, Indeed, Google, X, and you name it. Um, ClickCast is the technology, right? Until we see if there's better technology out there, mm -hmm. we will continue to use ClickCast. There's a challenge, kids. There's a challenge there. vendors out there. We will continue to use it yeah. um, and have our team managing it effectively. So we've seen instances where companies are acquired, uh, they integrate the technology, and the competition tends to kind of slowly exit stage left. Yeah. Uh, ISIM's buying text recruit, Canvas, Jobvite, these things uh, happen. Have you been given uh, an affirmation from AppCast that they're going to stick around, they're not going to shut anybody yeah. off you've been given are you under contract the, what, that they what can't you do which that? which you hear is true i mean and i will say chris is a reputable guy we've all known him for a long time yep. he's a man of his word um and he's i mean if he's trying to keep both going as well and so what he said to you all and what you guys have reported on is accurate yeah. he is managing our partnership and relationship no different than he did before it was bought by baird and he respects our decision and as long as click has continues to distribute i think there can be a way for both of us to compete as well as cooperate so he's one guy though and he could be gone tomorrow he's got a good team though that okay so yeah. you trust the, the the team in itself not just not just i, tr Chris. I trust my team okay i mean at the end of the day you also realize it's we're using the tool but it's what we're doing with the tool but they have access to your data though right not technically i mean legally no i mean they're going through their system i don't think they're going to be combing through it okay that okay. would cause some bigger issues i would think so yeah. i would think so but i mean again to be able to poach clients and to be able to know results and you know effectiveness and all those, yep. always looking for always looking for a market differentiator or at least something to to, to yep. try after new new clients. But as we even talked about, and you guys have talked about in the show today, uh -huh. like we're mentioning Indeed, you're mentioning X, you're mentioning case in point even Grinder. It's one piece to the total puzzle, <laughs> yeah. right? So I mean, do companies yes? Do they pick you for just your programmatic technology? It's part of the equation, right? But it's not the only thing. Yeah. So it's what else can we deliver on top of that? That's I mean, to your point, yes. Could they see who my clients? Are? You can walk down my walls and see who my clients are. Yeah. Um, as long as I believe, right? And what I was trained is like, do what's right for the client first and foremost. We're not going to have an issue about client retention. Yeah. And that's 75 plus years of uh, 73, proof, 73. Proof but I appreciate the fa you know fast forward. I'm confident. That <laughs> I'm confident that she'll make it. So if we go upstream a little bit, uh, our listeners know that Stepstone acquired AppCast. Stepstone owned by Axel Springer yeah. owns a, a lot of us. Do you, are you putting any of those pieces together? Do you see a bigger strategy with the European arm and, and what AppCast is doing? I mean, I think it's a clear and cl clear direction that Stepstone want. I mean, they've always wanted to come into the U.S. market. This is just their oh. first entree, right, with AppCast yeah. was a clear inclination. As you also all reported on, they obviously bought AI technology, still to be determined mm -hmm. what they're going to do with that, <laughs> and now obviously made a big purchase, right, with Bayard. So, I mean, I think it's evident that they are key in coming into the U.S. market. And, and, and they'll be buying CareerBuilder when? Well, that's, that's your call. <laughs> oh, that's my call. Huh? That's your I call, not mine. I thought here in Chicago you might have some in, insider baseball for oh, us. Oh, I but just unfortunately, no. don't see that happening. I just, I just don't see that happening. It, 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 it would be, it would be It'll great. Be never, you can never say never. You can never say never. Prediction. Them, you, Europe's coming. Europe's coming. Your, Europe is coming. So what about, what about for Shaker and take a look at, uh, again, Europe as well? I mean, from a global standpoint. You guys yeah. work with 
huge brands yeah. that have uh, a reach into Europe and beyond. How much, uh, how much more traction or even more penetration are you trying to get into those, those different markets? Yeah, I mean, we're very proud to be the U.S. representative to a global network called One Agent. Um, actually, just in three weeks' time frame, actually, all of our One Agent partners will be coming in to actually Chicago, where we're going to be hosting them for three, four days of meetings. Um, it's a good network. Uh -huh. right? It's a way for us to stay at the forefront right i mean us is not always in, at the beginning yeah. of trends right we tend to think we are but yeah. there's things that come out of those respective countries so it's always a great time in those during those sessions to meet with our partners to hear what's working what's not in your markets and then obviously vice versa it also yes to your point allows us to expand into those markets very quickly and have a full service agency that has branding capabilities, media buying capabilities, technology consult, they're built very similar to the way Shaker is to be able to address our clients' needs and help them scale into those markets as well. So I'm hearing a London hub, kids, or maybe even Paris hub. I got a, we got a great London partner. <laughs> It's a hub wheel. It's a spoke in a wheel type of model. Nice. And we'll Very be nice. recording live as soon as that office <laughs> You want to go to the hub beer. They got right. beer. Wherever, wherever you are, we'll be, Joe. Jen. You have an interesting perspective on the ground of what employers are asking for, what they want, what, what works. Chad and I have our head in the clouds so much with AI and Grindr and yeah. whatever else, right? What are employees? Always with the Grindr. What are employers asking for? What's working? Give us a on the ground take of, of the, the state of employment right now. Yeah, I would say, I mean, well, two big components, right, that are uh, of everyone's interest, right? Ours as well as which is then obviously in turn becomes our employers is around data, right? And having that data case and first, first and foremost be transparent. I think a lot of times, unfortunately, sorry, some clients, the data is being held back. You're not, they're not getting a full accuracy, right, in terms of what's working and what is not. Yeah. And so where are they getting your results, whether it be X, whether it be Grindr, whether it be Indeed, whether it be AppCast, whether it be Google, whether it be Facebook, you know, they don't necessarily care as much as long as we can have the supporting case to tell them this is why we're here, this is what they're getting, here's the results, and here's how we can even make it more effective. Um, so, I mean, data has always been talked about, right? It's always been an obstacle because ATSs, yes. right, always made that difficult. Yeah. Those days are gone, right? We can now get real access to it in real time and transparently then tell them this is what we're seeing and this is what we should do with it. That would be one of the, I mean, I would say one big trend. Yeah. The second is around speed. And yes, you can call it automation over AI, mm -hmm. but they don't, employees don't have the time to sit and wait for a candidate three, four, five days to get an interview schedule. Right. Empl em candidates are not going to spend, we've been talking about candidate experience forever, but they're not going to spend an hour, yeah. right, telling you this is what it's like to work here. Yeah. So they, employers have to find ways in which to speed up the apply process and make sure that we get them through the bottleneck quickly and efficiently. Otherwise, spend all the money in branding, spend all the money in media, it's just going to break. How much, so. now, how much time are you spending with them on process? Because we all know that the, the process when we first went to paper applications to online, literally they just mimicked yeah. the exact process, right? And it's like there are still those old 1990s processes that are out there they're just in digital form yeah. how much time are you guys spending in trying to help them reformat re re framework their their process because they ask so many things that are really not necessary in many cases uh just to be able to speed all that up yeah that I mean it depends on the client right because some clients control their his system yeah others do not right and so ultimately right you have to find out who's the right gatekeeper in controlling those decisions but ideally we're going to spend a third around our time around building that right message a third around where we're going to activate it and a third around what's that conversion going to look like gotcha because to the point earlier like if you just focus on that one side like even just the media side it's not going to be as effective right having that authentic message is going to give you that retention the media is going to drop that cost per click down yeah. and then the conversion is going to convert more of them and bring that cost per hire down i think that's so the, third, the third, biggest key i don't want to say a third 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 bada but bing bada boom bing, it's that's, simple as that i think that, that's or the, you just call it a trifecta in horse racing the biggest key is that we've uh been focusing on brand and messaging and all those things and drawing candidates in and then they go through a shitty process yeah Right. And, and yeah. I, so what you're what you're saying, what you're seeing is uh, most companies are starting to recognize that they really need to retool if they're going to be competitive. Yeah, it's, and it's also a numbers game. Right. Go back to data. Yeah. You know that it takes, let's just call it 20 applications to make a hire. And we can drop that from 20 to 10 
that's real money saved. Yeah. Right. And so if you automate it or we can work more efficiently and drive those numbers down, you can ultimately spend less money in those other buckets. You mentioned horse racing. I'm going to let you out on this. The over under in Vegas for the Brown or for the Bears this season is 7.5 wins. Over, Are over, you over, 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 over. <laughs> under is the correct answer. <laughs> we out. We out. See ya. Thank you for listening to what's it called? The podcast. The chat. The cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout-outs of people you don't even know. And yet, you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!